Almost two years ago, I helped our friend Daryl make this haunted house. Mm -hmm. This was the first haunted house we tried, and it didn't turn out too bad. I like it. It's cartoony, and it's fun. Right. Well, as fun as it is, you and I decided it could use some upgrades. Mm -hmm. Nothing too fancy. We don't have to remodel this whole house, uh, but certainly we could purchase the plot next door Uh and give this haunted house some neighbors. You're right. And we're also going to go over how to make miniature headstones out of foam, wood, clay, and cardboard. Happy Halloween, by the way. Happy Halloween. Yeah. And the same to everyone watching. Yeah, this seems like an appropriate build for Halloween. Yeah. A miniature cemetery. Knowing, as we do, how disrespectful of boundaries ghosts and Uh zombies and monsters can be. Yeah. The first thing we have to do before we fill this boneyard is build a wall. I think a lot of people know how to make brick walls out of foam. I think so. Yeah, you cut the foam, Mm -hmm. you engrave the bricks into the foam, you Mod Podge the foam, you paint the foam. Yeah, I mean, there are dozens of videos about it. It's Mm -hmm. very simple. And we show all the steps here in this video too. Yeah. But we also made a cemetery fence with some plastic cocktail sticks and styrene. We jammed that into the foam, and once it's painted, it should look like a classic cemetery wall. You know, I had a cemetery, uh, since nobody asked, (laughs) right beside the playground of my elementary school. Oh boy. Yeah. What was that like? Well, first, I just want to say that cemeteries are nice places where you can pay respects to loved ones who have passed. Yeah. Celebrate their lives. Uh, They're perfectly pleasant memorial parks. Of course. Of course. But when you're a kid, and if you have a habit of watching too many horror movies when your parents aren't home, (laughs) you learn that cemeteries are a breeding ground for the undead Mm. in all its forms. Mm. So, you know, trying to enjoy recess with the knowledge that vengeful spirits of the dead are plotting against you on the other side of a hedgerow (laughs) is challenging, to say the least. Okay, you made a foam wall. Let's make a foam headstone. Right. Now, this headstone is based on one that was in that graveyard by my schoolyard. Oh, jeez. It wasn't one of those smooth, round-top, friendly stones either. It was more dramatic. It was angular. It kind of gave you a chill when you Mm. walked by it. To make a headstone from foam, you basically just decide how many parts and pieces you're going to need to cut, sand, and grave, and glue together. Uh, This is simple enough for kids to do, but I really, I would urge people to have adult supervision for the cutting and the gluing. I did. Uh, I have you. (laughs) Yes, you You kept your eye on me, (laughs) and I managed to get through it without cutting myself. This time. This time. (laughs) But yeah, this is similar to the wall. Yeah. Cut, glue, paint, wash. I think most of the headstones we did in the cemetery finish with wash and a dry brush. They do. Okay, for the wooden headstone, I considered taking some balsa and an art knife and just cutting out a stone. Mm -hmm. I was also tempted to just lop off the end of this paint stirrer stick. Oh yeah, that's kind of headstone shaped. Right? And it just would have taken a stronger knife to cut that. But instead, uh, when I went to the doctor, uh, Mm. he uses these giant tongue depressors on me because I have a giant mouth. (laughs) And uh, I thought, this is a ready-made headstone shape right here. Oh, it is. So I cut off the ends of a few of those, maybe two or three. I stuck them together with a little wood glue. Then I clamped them overnight while the glue dried. When they were solidly fused together, I used a Dremel to sand down the rough spots. And you used the Dremel to engrave the stone, too. Yeah, I grabbed some tiny little pointy bit that came with the Dremel, Mm. and I roughly engraved like an old-timey-looking skull with angel wings. Oh, yeah. And then it's just paint, wash, repeat, you know. (laughs) 
It looks like an old weathered headstone. Yeah, it worked out so well that I grabbed some different sized popsicle sticks and I made a second one. Also, stick around to the end if you want to see why I spent my time making these tiny little foam coffins. Okay, clay. The most stone-like of all the miniature headstone materials. Right? So, I decided for variety to make one of those Celtic cross headstones. The one with the cross inside the circle. Right. Making the shapes kind of rectangular took some time. But once everything was together, I stuck in some toothpicks and armature wire so I could attach the base in the circle part. And since you weren't doing anything, I asked you to bake this part for me. Yeah. Yeah, at your point, I did. <laughs> I asked you to bake it. What I got back was a charred <laughs> nugget of coal in the shape of a cross. I have told you time and again, I need adult supervision. Yes. <laughs> but you made a second one. I baked the second one. I made it up to you. Look at it. You would have burned that one, too, if I hadn't turned off the oven. It was close. How many of these did you want me to make? Look, I, I, this is clearly, obviously, this is a fool you twice, shame on you situation. No, this, it really is. This is not on me. Anyway, paint, wash, dry brush, and it's done. I need Finally. supervision. Now the most elegant of stones cardboard. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had worked on three different types of headstones mm -hmm. and I thought, I think I can get another one in here. I knew we had a ton of chipboard lying around oh, yeah. so I thought, let me give this a try. If you had a laser cutter, you could make short, precise work of all of this. Oh, right. But all I had were my stupid hands <laughs> and a knife. So I did my best. I cut out a simple, cartoony coffin shape about five times. Nice. And I glued them all together. Then I used a ball stylus to engrave some writing in the stone. Then I carefully coated the whole thing in CA glue. Super glue. Yeah, it sealed the edges so that they wouldn't fray, mm -hmm. and it made the whole stone durable, resilient, and most importantly, it prevented the paint and the wash from waterlogging the chipboard. Yeah, otherwise it would have gotten soggy during the wash. That's yeah. a great idea. So here are all the headstones. The two foam, the clay. Yeah, our friend Daryl made that second clay stone. Mm -hmm. The two wooden ones and the cardboard. I think they look great. I do too. We're almost done here, but we got to clear these out mm -hmm. and make the mound of earth for the headstones. Yeah, so I stacked and glued a bunch of foam together so I could carve out a hill with a foam sculpting tool. Mm -hmm. And this step is basically just sanding and shaping and shaping and sanding. Right. And then flocking it with uh, foam dirt and nylon grass. And uh, did you, uh, yeah. pardon me, did you say <laughs> yes. that they changed Halloween in your neighborhood uh -huh. to the Saturday before <laughs> Halloween, like two days ago? Yeah, I guess so the kids would have the day off the next day. That's not how it works, Michelle. No, I know. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> There's only one night where the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead are at their thinnest. <laughs> yes. And it has been that way since the ninth century. Oh, back when you were a kid. Yeah, back yes, in the ninth century. Back when century. I was a kid in the ninth century. Was, first of all, wait, was trick or treat in your neighborhood still from six to eight? Five to seven. Five to seven? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense anymore. I know. They're done at seven, but the next day they need to sleep in till noon? Right. This is, uh, look, I know that you probably have a deep respect for your local municipal board. <laughs> I don't think I that's imagine. accurate. <laughs> but they are clearly clueless uh -huh. where Halloween is concerned. <laughs> right? They have no respect for the old ways, Michelle. Uh. The way of the pumpkin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what happens tonight? Uh. Like, are, are the kids just sitting around in their houses? Yeah. Are all the spirits wandering your neighborhood, wondering where all the kids are? I guess in my neighborhood, but... I guess the kids with easygoing parents are probably being driven to other neighborhoods oh, to yeah. trick-or-treat there. Yeah. Thereby putting an undue strain <laughs> yeah. on the candy supplies oh, of all yeah. the neighborhoods right. who are celebrating <laughs> Halloween correctly on the 31st. I'm livid. I can tell. I am livid, and you should be livid, too. <laughs> oh. Also, just to prove a point, mm -hmm. what's the date of President's Day? Uh, geez, uh, some Monday. Exactly. Yeah, I don't Nobody know. Nobody knows Monday, because the date is always changing. Yeah. That's why nobody knows exactly what day Thanksgiving is. It's yeah. just a Thursday. Right. And Easter, it's just mm -hmm. a Sunday. 
And that's what'll happen to Halloween, our precious Halloween, yes. if we let people keep switching the day around <laughs> so that kids can sleep in the day after. I mean, if that's the motivation, why not just have it on July 15th when everyone's out of school? <laughs> right? Why not have it uh, every Saturday during oh, summer? Geez. Or double up and have it on New Year's Eve. That <laughs> holiday sucks anyway. Oh, what is happening to our traditions? <laughs> oh. All right, let's look at this thing. So this is what the house looked like last year before the upgrades. It's fine. Yeah. It's spooky, cartoony. Yeah. And here's what it looks like after the new neighbors moved in. <laughs> I'm really happy with I this. I really am too. So this is like a cutaway mm -hmm. of a city block. The rust on the fence looks great. It really does. So do those actual spider webs. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't have planned that. Well, that's what happens when you leave the project in the basement for too long. <laughs> the headstones all look decent. A nice variety. I, I know. We didn't mention this. Because I was ranting, but <laughs> right. all of those autumn leaves we sprinkled and glued down were bits of dried flowers. They look great on the hill yeah. and on the sidewalk. Yes, and on the porch roof. And on our view from the bat cam, as the <laughs> vampire bat flies over the house, we find that the fall rains may have caused some subsidence in the local graveyard. As we drop down behind the headstones, mm -hmm. we can see a cutaway of the hillside, uh, and uh, yep. We got yep. a real yep. poltergeist situation here. We really here. do. We mm -hmm. should have built a little swimming pool oh. with a tiny Joe Beth Williams in it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But that's not the only problem. Mm -mm. It's not just about graves becoming disturbed and corpses sliding from the coffins. No, it's much worse. Uh huh. Because on the other side of the fence, we see that some of these corpses are not quite dead enough. Oh, no. They're not resting in peace. Mm -hmm. They may want to meet the owners of the house. I, and you know what? It's the 31st. Maybe they want to do a little trick or treating. It's the right date. Exactly my point. If you want to see the original build of the haunted house, it's pretty simple yeah. and fun, and I think it'd make a good family project. It would. We'll put a link up for that. Yeah, and happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, happy Halloween. If you go out tonight, have fun and be safe. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you live in a neighborhood that changed Halloween to this past Saturday, oh, no. <laughs> uh, you should probably move. That's move. a terrible place. <laughs> oh, you know what? Jesus. Fight your local government. Don't let them take Halloween <laughs> oh, away from you. No. Won't somebody please think of the druid? Oh, oh great pumpkin. Where are you? <laughs>